barbed wire. This invention is a pure stroke of genius and revolutionized what we now think of as the American West. How could these trivial pieces of wire revolutionize half a country? Well, imagine the West as a group of small towns populated mostly by men and most of them having no concern for rules. Oh yeah, it was the gold rush that brought all the men out West to seek their fortunes in gold. Right, there were also barely any laws and almost no order in these primitive towns. Also, the fencing, or lack thereof, was an eastern solution trying to work in the west. The lack of resources, such as wood and stone, which were fencing materials commonly used in the east, made fencing off large plots of land nearly impossible. Even with wire, they only used one strand that broke easily when cattle leaned on it. Therefore, herding animals were not fenced in. This meant that ranchers took their livestock on other people's land and used public watering holes because the property lines were not defined. And sometimes they just let the cattle roam free. As a result, women had to frequently chase cattle out of their home. Even as women changed, the views that society had on them stayed the same. Even though women started taking on more masculine jobs, the men still dictated where the family went and for how long. Women in the West were hopeless because they felt that they would never feel at home, and they strayed farther from the definition of feminine. Also, a lack of money forced some women into prostitution. There were also a number of factors pulling the family apart. Along with dangerous animals and diseases, the towns were not designed for family life. No wonder many families gave up and retreated east. The lives that families were forced to live in this time were not ideal for raising a family. The nomadic Indians of the Great Plains were also affected by the invention of barbed wire. They were the Sioux, Cheyenne, Crow, Blackfeet, Comanche, and Pawnee. They followed the herds of buffalo all over the Great Plains, taking their villages with them. They didn't see the land as something that you can fence off or own. It was a clash of beliefs when the miners came and said that they owned the land that they worked on and started setting up towns. This caused tension between these groups and made it impossible for the two to agree, and the miners with their advanced technology overpowered the nomadic Indians. One technology that caused this tension was barbed wire. The creation of barbed wire was invented by Joseph F. Clyden. His inspiration for this invention was during his visit to a farming market. Like most men at the time, he had a weak fence surrounding his farm. His first patent was similar to the Kelly model, but he made improvements. It consisted of a round fence wire and a barb formed of two short pointed pieces of wire, secured in place upon the fence by coiling between their ends, which were extended to present four points in different directions. His second patent, substituting a double twisted wire for a single wire upon which a fixed piece of pointed wire coiled in the center, forming two transversive points. From manufacturing a few of these by hand on his farm, Glyden progressed to making the material by horsepower, using at first a single horse to propel his imperfect machinery, which over the years was improved until its perfection is a matter of astonishment to all beholders. This machinery, together with extensive establishment, has all been created out of raw material within the incredibly short period of two years, during which time large sums of money expanded have been made in the business itself so that it has been self-developing and self-supporting and has created, in addition, a large surplus. Glyden first convinced his neighbors of the practicality of this invention by making it with his own hands and setting off his farm portions with this fence. As these experiments were gradually improved and exhibited, the demand for the fence became urgent. In July 1874, Glyden entered in partnership with a young, eccentric Isaac L. Elwood and commenced manufacturing in the city of DeKalb. The business soon outgrew the facilities and in the winter of 1874-75, to 75, they erected a larger building. With the help of barbed wire, the miners slowly shrunk the land that the nomadic Indians used. It allowed them to fence off large plots of land, their intention being to keep cattle in, but as a consequence, they kept the nomadic Indians out of places that they normally went. 
the nomadic Indians had to adjust to the changes that the men were doing in order to keep some of their homes. They had no power in the West to change the way it was heading. Their whole lives were being disturbed. They were forced to go along with everything that was being done against their will. The nomadic Indians tried to stay away from the barbed wire being used. They did not want to concern themselves with it. They commonly relocated to avoid the problem. But as the use spread throughout the West, the nomadic Indians were being pushed into smaller and smaller spaces. Along with this, they had no means of farming for themselves or obtaining barbed wire because they were cut off from the miners. Not only did they find themselves cheated off their land, but their money. The Indians, known as a Crow War, Indians would most often guide the mirror with their herd across trivial land. And when the Crow Warrior demanded a dollar per head, the rancher refused to pay. Ranchers using barbed wire were pleased. They were limiting the nomadic way of life and showing that they had conquered the West. As you can see, not everyone was pleased with the use of barbed wire. Along with the nomadic Indians, barbed wire also upset many open-range farmers. This happened when farmers would close off their land with barbed wire, and in doing so, close off access to water that other farmers used. This led to the enclosure movement. This was when farmers were upset with the ranchers that closed off their access to watering holes and grazing spots. Life for women in the West changed as well with the introduction of barbed wire. They went back to gender roles that were accepted in the East. Women being the housekeeper and were in charge of the children. With a greater control on the land and farm animals due to the use of barbed wire, they were needed less around the farm and returned to what was socially accepted of women at the time. Being perfect housewives and catering to every wish of the husband, now working, always looking presentable, keeping the children educated and respectful just like in the East. With all of these changes in the West, it is easy to see how the use of simple fencing material can change half a country. And affected women, the nomadic Indians, as well as family life.